All right, so we just returned back from a trip to Italy. While we were there, we stayed a few days on the Amalfi Coast. What makes these towns really unique on the coast is how the homes are literally dug right into the side of the cliff. They also have these really neat meandering staircases that lead you all the way through the towns. I really wanted to capture this in conjunction with the sunrise. But the only way to do this was with a digital panorama. Now, before we jump into the proper techniques on how to set up a digital panorama and create it in post, please remember to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on future tips, techniques, or product releases. Now, the first step is to make sure your camera is set in manual exposure. As you're panning around, you don't want your exposure changing. Now, I either expose for the brightest part of my image or my main subject. In this example, I set my exposure on the back buildings, and I'm just gonna let the brightness of the sun fall away and peek out. The second thing I'm going to do is get my focus set on my main subject. Then I'm gonna turn my camera into manual focus. I also, in addition to not wanting exposure changing, I don't want my focus changing throughout the pan. Now, if you're shooting a wide panorama, the next thing you're gonna do is you're actually gonna rotate your camera from landscape mode to portrait mode. Then I'm gonna find the horizon, and depending on where I'm gonna put that in my composition, I'm gonna to try to keep that at that same level as I move around. Now, the reason we turn to portrait mode rather than sticking in landscape mode is because, especially if you're using handheld, is because we're probably gonna have small mistakes up or down as we go around, even though we're trying to keep the horizon line level, we're gonna have mistakes on the top and bottom of our image. By shooting vertically, we're giving ourselves ample room for mistakes, and we're simply gonna crop those out and post. Now, the rule of thumb for overlap is generally one third. So as we're moving around, we're gonna make sure that we only move two thirds through the next shot before we take another image. Now this rule is really just for mid-range lenses, something like a 35, 50 millimeter or above. If we're shooting a wide angle, we need to take more images with greater overlap. This is because wide angle lenses distort on the edge. And if we move too much, our lines simply aren't gonna match up. So if I'm shooting something like a 16 to a 24 millimeter, I might only move about a third to a half of the way over and get a lot of overlap. This allows the software ample opportunity to match up those lines. All right, so now that we have our images, we're gonna head home, upload these to our computer, and stitch them together. All right, for this process, we're gonna be using Adobe Bridge. Now, Adobe Bridge is a standalone program, but if you think you don't have it, it's also built into Photoshop. So if you have Photoshop, you have Adobe Bridge. Simply open up Photoshop and then go File, Browse, and Bridge. Now Adobe Bridge is also a file browser in addition to a raw editor. In order to find your images, simply use the tabs on the left to navigate to where you uploaded them to. There's no need to import these images like you would in Adobe Lightroom. Now one trick I like to do in the field is I'll shoot my hand before and after a series of images. This makes them really easy to find later on. So I'll simply highlight all those by shift clicking and then hitting enter. This will bring them into the raw editor. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them again by hitting command A or control A if you're on a PC. And then I'm going to click on the lens corrections tab and I'm going to check Remove Chromatic Aberrations and Enable Profile Corrections. And you'll notice that it recognized my body and the lens I'm using, and it's going to apply a couple things to remove as much distortion as it possibly can. Then I'm gonna come back over to the film strip, and right next to film strip, you'll see three short lines. If you click on this menu, it will bring up Merge to Panorama. Now we have a few options here. You'll notice boundary wrap and you can change that. This will warp your image to fill all available space. I generally don't like doing this because I think it changes the actual image that you shot. There's also fill edges. This is very similar to Photoshop's content aware. I also don't like doing this because it adds things to my image that weren't originally there. What I will do however, is I'll apply auto settings and auto crop. 
Now auto crop will cut out all the little mistakes we made on the top and bottom. Then I'll simply hit merge. Bridge will then create a digital negative and put it in the same folder that the rest of your images are in. You'll notice now that Bridge is creating that panorama on the bottom left. And you'll notice it says one remaining. There is a small wall on the right hand side of my screen that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the crop tool again to remove that. You'll notice that once I click on that, it shows the entire image and we can see all those small mistakes that Bridge cropped out for us. Now, if I click on the basic corrections tab, you'll see all the auto apply settings it did. It upped our contrast, it brought down our highlights, it upped our shadows. We can continue to manipulate this as much as we want to get the desired results. Now, because Bridge combined 20 raw images into a digital negative, we can treat this image as one single raw image now. So we didn't lose any ability to alter our post-production workflow. We're gonna treat this just like we would any raw file. Now, in addition to having the raw file, if you'd prefer to export this out as a JPEG or a TIFF, simply go back into the raw editor, click on save and choose your desired configuration. And that's it. That's all you need to do to create a digital raw panorama. If you'd like to see a review on a particular product, please leave a comment below. And as always, please subscribe.